John Bones Jones, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. Today, we'll be using John Jones. You know why we're using John Jones? Because it is John Jones' birthday. I believe he turned 34. Either he turned he turned 34 or, th or 35, one of the other, I'm not sure. It is a little bit surprising to me, though, because like when I think about how long he's been fighting, it kind of seems like he should be older than 34 years old. Um, but I think this is this is not bad at all, especially because he's now fighting in the heavyweight division. If he was fighting in a lower weight class, like if he was in the featherweight division or bantamweight division or even like lightweight, that would be a problem. It'd be a problem because a lot of these fighters are they're a little bit younger. But in the heavyweight division, a lot of these guys can fight up until they're like 40, even even older. I mean, we all remember Randy Couture. So I don't think it's that big of a deal um, that he's he's 34 years old. I do think he needs to get back in the octagon sooner rather than later um, just because he's not getting younger. I mean, if we take a look at his Instagram, like, like what what is John Jones up to? Because like even though he's my favorite fighter, man, I'll be honest with you guys, sometimes you kind of forget about him. You know, you forget about him just because he's not active. And that's just what happens out of sight. Is out of mind. If a fighter is not active and doing exactly what they all what they used to do, you tend to slowly start forgetting about about those fighters. And right now, it would seem that John Jones is doing exactly what he said he was going to do, which is trying to bulk up. Take a look at the way his physique is kind of looking right now. Um, he looks bigger. He looks bigger. Definitely, you can tell he's carrying a little bit more fat. You know, he's not like a Francis Ngannou who looks like he's freaking carved out of stone, but he's definitely bigger right here. It looks like he is um, working on those hands. Not looking too bad. Nice jab, lead uppercut, cross, jab, cross, jab, jab, slip into a cross, cross. Yeah, he's not looking bad. He's moving. He's moving a lot better than I thought. He definitely that, that, a lot better than I thought he would. And of course, um, the thing uh, with because right now most mostly what he's doing is he's doing strength and conditioning, trying to bulk up. Right there, he's he's going to squat. I'm not sure how much weight this actually is, but um, using the safety bar. I actually love to use this safety bar because my um, my shoulders are not very mobile, so I can't really like, get back enough to use the regular. The regular bar so this is a lot more comfortable with this you can just wow he's a little bit wobbly though see he wobbles to one side he's strong though i mean he's looking big he's looking big building up that strength building up his conditioning building up the weight which i think is a good thing i really think so a lot of people are worried that you know as he gets bigger he's going to lose cardio but the good thing about that is if you look at john jones's physique as he's getting bigger like you could tell that uh it's not oh this is impressive you could tell that it's not it's not all muscle right which is good because if you're carrying a, a, a bit more fat it's not as demanding as having all muscle in terms of conditioning because muscle we all as we all know requires a lot more juice to be able to run it so the fact that he's he has a little bit a little bit of fat on him i think that's fine i think he'll be okay stamina and conditioning wise and when it's time like if he actually has a fight booked when it's time to actually start specifically training that's when everything ramps up that's when he's going to start focusing on skill building or skill uh getting cleaning up his skills that's when he's going to clean up his boxing clean up his kickboxing clean up his jiu-jitsu his wrestling get everything get his body right back to fighting and that's also when he's going to get in the in the best possible shape that he can what is this Great. hold on smile without your eyes raise your eyebrows stop smiling that's your model face smile without Anyways, now that we're done with that, time to use John Jones. What we're going to do is we're going to try to get at least three fights in, maybe four if we have enough time. It is going to be the heavyweight and light heavyweight divisions. That's the weight class that we're about to hit right now, so that's pretty good. John Jones is in, is in both weight classes, so we're going to be able to use bones regardless of what weight class that we get. And um, we'll try to do our very best. Uh, a way to say happy birthday to the champ so let's get it let's get it okay here we go john bones 
Oh, shit. Is camera fixed? Is this thing working properly? We good. Okay, so we're going to use John Jones, starting things off in the light heavyweight division. My opponent looks like he doesn't really know who he wants to use. Probably going to go DC. A lot of times when, when people see you pick John Jones, they want to go with Daniel Cormier just so that they make sure that they have the wrestling. Luke Rockhold, let's get it. <laughs> Absolutely. I love me. Let's get it. Let's do it. Luke Rockhold. I like it. Rockhold was supposed to be the guy, man. He was supposed to be the guy. He was supposed to be the guy to, to stop John Jones. But, of course, he moved up to the light heavyweight division and ran into Jan Wachowicz. Jan Wachowicz kills him with that uppercut. Sends that man packing. And I believe he's going to go back to the middleweight division. I'm ready. Let's get it. No touch. No touch. Now, we've talked about in the past, I mean, you guys have seen me use John Jones. Get up! You guys have seen me use John Jones before. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that. That whole doubling up to my body thing that you just did, don't do it again. Can't help yourself, can you? Can't help yourself. You guys have seen me use John Jones here quite a few times, and the rules are the same. You know, the rules with Jones are fairly the same, especially if you're trying to learn. Get out of here with that. Especially if you're, you're kind of new to using John and you're trying to learn how to use him. You know, I just have a few set of rules. Well, not rules, suggestions, if you want to make the most of the character. Now, you could go the route of every freaking bum out there trying to use John Jones and just knee elbow spam. You could do that. You could definitely do that. It's going to win you a few fights. Um... Just stand in front of them, knee, elbow, knee, elbow, elbow, knee. It's going to win you a few fights until you until you run into a good player. Then you're going to get shredded. But if you want to make the most of Jones and if you want to use him properly, don't do that, bro. Just stop. Just stop. I've said this before. Stop doubling up with the body shot. <laughs> stop doing that. You want to use John properly? Remember, you go single strikes and vary up your, your attack. And, of course, the easy way to say it is single strike, high variance. What that means is try to throw as few combinations as possible and vary your attacks. So, you might go elbow. Next up, you go teep to the body. Next up, you go front kick to the face like I just did. Then you go hook to the body. Then you go knee. Then you go head kick. You're varying up the attack. And you need to try to do that as frequently as possible. Second thing I will suggest is to avoid boxing. Avoid boxing. And the reason you want to avoid boxing with John Jones is because this game is literally designed to give you a disadvantage if you try to box with a fighter with really long arms. John Jones has really long arms. Don't box with him. You will be slower. You will be more sluggish. You're not going to get the you're not going to have the frame advantage that you need to be able to exchange properly. Just don't do it. Don't do that. Oh my god. It's like, bro, are we are we playing the same match? Are we playing the same match? Didn't I already rock you 3 times while you were trying to go to my body and that didn't teach you anything, man? It didn't teach you anything whatsoever? Like, what is this? What is this? Y'all gotta pay attention to what's going on when, when, you, when you play this game. When you're fighting, pay attention to what's happening. Let's move on, man. Okay. Jeez, man. That, that last one was just freaking crazy. Andre Bishop. Andre, when you're facing someone like Andre Bishop, those rules that I talked about in the first fight, that's where they really come in, especially rule number two, which is try not to box. Now, of course, 
if you are a really good player, you could do whatever the hell you want. Like you could you could break all the rules. You could you could go into a straight boxing boxing match with John Jones and you'll be fine because you're a good player. You know how to play the game. You you know, good players know how to freaking break all the goddamn fucking rules. But what I'm saying is, if you're if this is you, you know you're, you're trying to get better with Jones, understand in a matchup like this, you have a huge huge boxing disadvantage because one almost almost that elbow was close that elbow was very close oh no you're fighting a guy in andre bishop who for one was put into the game as a pure boxer two he moves like a middleweight. I'm not even exaggerating. I mean, you guys see how fast he's moving. He moves like a middleweight. And so, trying to exchange with him is a... Look, I mean, look at look, look at this. I thought I had the frame advantage right there, but I guess not. You need to be very careful trying to exchange with him. Because he will be able to reach you before you can reach him. Even if you think you're starting... God damn, bro. Even if you think you're starting to, to strike before him, he's fast enough that he can hit you before you hit him, even though you started your strike first. So, that's why I suggest not boxing with Andre Bishop. Rather, do that. Use your elbows if you can. If he's at range and he's not sidestepping all over the place, try to use your long-range weapons. Use your front kick to the body. Use your teeps. Use your front leg side kick. Use your rear leg side kick. You have weapons that you can use, man. And on the inside, try to focus on elbows. You guys will notice when I do box, it's mostly jabs. And then the occasional hook to the body. It's like jab, hook to the body. That's the whole... That's my boxing. So... Oh my god, I'm trying to spin on him. But he, he's able to reach me first. Also, this guy is actually making this a difficult fight. And the way he's making it a difficult fight is... He got me. Freaking guy got me. He's making it a difficult fight because, generally speaking, when you're facing Andre Bishops, they're going... go. Supposed to, that was supposed to be a fake. Usually, when you're facing Andre Bishop players, they, they're... Throwing combo after combo after combo. It's go, 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 go. Over and over again. And when you have players that are playing like that, you can, they're very predictable because you know, okay, the combos are coming in a specific rhythm. Boom, 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 boom. That allows you to know how to move your head. But if you have a player that's going jab, cross, hook, jab, cross, jab, jab. When you have a player that's playing with the rhythm like that, those guys are difficult to deal with. So you see the way he's playing? He's playing. He goes jab, jab. And, um... Give me a back. Give me a back! Oh, you little bitch. I want to take this man to the ground. I, I, it's time to mix things up a little bit. Just because... You know, he's... He's rocked me a few times now. I need to try to mix things up. And not let my ego get the best of me. He's up. Fuck, bro. Because a lot of times when I use John Jones and someone's out striking me when I've got Jones, my ego gets in the way. And I'm like, I will absolutely refuse to take you down. But that's not the way, man. Don't do that. Do not do that, sir. Do not do that. Nice. Nice to nine. Oh! Oh, that was ill-advised. Oh my god. He's just gonna lay on his back and camp on the deny. Yeah, that's what he's doing.
Okay, bro. Alright. Fine. He's just gonna camp on the on on the on deny, okay? I don't blame him honestly. I I really don't blame him. That's the way the game was designed. Cause I mean he understands, he knows. Cause if he tries to get up and I deny him one time, that gives me a whole like a, a world of GA. Uh, allows me to pass his guard. I get to an advantageous position like side control. He's fucked. So the best case scenario for him is just to sit there. Got him. Just to sit there and uh, just camp on the deny. So I get it, bro. I get it. I do think he believes that he's safe on the feet, but that's not the case, man. He's so eager to stand back up. I don't... I don't think... I'm just going to punch him in the face, bro. Like, I'm not even going to try to transition. I'm going to punch him in the face. Bum, 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 bum. He's just gonna lay on his back like a freaking Democrat. <laughs> oh, that's about to piss you guys off. That's about to piss a bunch of you off. That's about to piss a bunch of you off. Anyways, yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't really blame him for, for doing that. He's doing that because... Because if he tries to transition, well, he's going to get, he's going to get fucked. But yeah, he's not as safe on the feet as he thinks, man. Got him. Not as safe on the feet as you think, brother. Okay, there you go. He's wisened up. He's, he's wisened up. He's like, okay, this dude is just going to punch me in the face if I don't move. That's not good. At least in guard, he doesn't really risk taking too much head damage. I can just, like, this doesn't do anything. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> He's going to camp on it. Yeah, you're up. You're up. You're up, bro. Got him. That was a beautiful pull counter. You know what, man? I could, I could, I could outstrike this guy, dude. I really could. I really could. If I just slow things down and just play super methodical. So let's just try to do that. Can you guys tell I'm sleepy? Can you guys tell I'm sleepy? Hmm. I know I just said, don't box too much with John Jones, and here, here I am, throwing a bunch of jabs and crosses. But, um, when you know the rules, you can break it. You feel me? When you know the rules, you can break those rules, brother. I am very comfortable with John Jones, which means occasionally I will do that. But it's, you guys will notice, it's mostly when he's running, when he's backing up. Trying to avoid getting his block over committed, like right here. That's when the jabs come into question. Because you want that block over committed. Hell yeah. Put pressure on him. Boom. Boom. But for the most part, the elbows are doing the damage, man. As always, like in real life. If you're going to outbox John Jones, careful with the elbows. The elbows will come. The elbows will come. Uh huh. Ayo. Got him. Got him. Got that boy. Oh ho. Oh ho. Oh ho. Oh ho. We got him. He's done. That was a little bit. That was a little bit weird, man. It was a little bit weird. That first round was weird. 
That first round scared me a little bit. I was like, damn, man, am I, am I, am I about to get knocked out by this guy? But nah, 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 nah. No, sir. No, sir. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. I cannot let John Jones get disrespected like that. The hell? Absolutely not on my watch. Boom! Elbow. Set him down. Okay, folks. We are going to move on. Hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. Let's move on. Alrighty. Alrighty. This is going to be the last fight we're going to do. Cause your boy is tired, man. Thank you. So we're facing Dan Henderson. And when you run into Dan Henderson, man, you know, he might not seem like much, but I promise you, he can hurt you. Especially when the opponent is doing that. I think a lot of players are starting to understand the right way to fight John Jones, which is good to see. It makes using Jones even that more difficult. And of course, the right way to use John, well, the right way to fight John Jones is to fight. You gotta fight John Jones the same way that every single fighter that ever gave John Jones issues fought him. Now, which fighters gave John Jones issue? Let's review. Got him. Let's review. Numero uno. Leota Machida. Leota Machida gave John Jones issue. He was a southpaw, a southpaw karate master who had very good movement, very fleet-footed. Made John Jones pressure him. Circled around the cage very, very well. Used nice leg kicks. Countered very well. That's not. That's the first one. Second fighter that gave John Jones issues. Alexander the Mauler, Gust of Sun, in the first fight. What was Alexander Gust of Sun? Very fleet-footed. A mover. Very good boxing. Never fought John Jones in a straight line. Forced John Jones to pressure, which of course forced John Jones to move forward in a straight line. Next up, Tiago Santos gave John Jones a, a little bit of issue on the feet. Tiago Santos, also another fleet footed guy, Southpaw, who moved very well, forced John Jones to pressure, used leg kicks to rack up points and just kept doing that rinse and repeat next up who else gave john jones issues on the feet dominic reyes what is dominic reyes all right another southpaw who was fleet-footed moved around the cage very well did not fight john jones in a straight line are we seeing a pattern emerging here? Are we starting to see a pattern emerging? Now, how did John Jones completely dominate Alexander Gustafson in round in the second fight? You guys remember? Let's review! Did John Jones pressure Gustafson? Absolutely freaking not. He did not. He learned from the first fight. Instead of Gus being able to Move around the cage like he like he loves to. Lunge all over the place. John forced Gustafson to move forward. Essentially taking away that footwork. Taking away that fleet-footed, fleet-footed whatever. He took it away. He forced Gus to move forward. And because of that, he was able to tag up Gustafson on the feet. So, what we're seeing is that John Jones has issues when he's in there. When he's in there against a guy, against a fighter that moves very well, forces him to come forward and just circles around the octagon and hits him all over the place, to, you know, racking up points. That's where John has issues. And so you want to fight John Jones properly in this game, you fight him the same way. Circle, lunge occasionally, sidestep occasionally. Do not fight him on a straight line because if you do that and you're facing a good Jones player, like this dude is starting to do right now. He's standing in front of me a little bit. And he's not do he's not using a lot of footsies. Every time he comes in, I can tell he wants to throw. So that allows me to blast him with these elbows. 
Very good. That's what he needs to be doing. He needs to be lunging. The moment I close distance, he's got to get out the way. Because fighting Jones here is not good. Fighting Jones right here, where we're all in a straight line, playing Muay Thai. That's bad. John is a bad man when you're in front of him. He's a bad man when you're in front of him. He's dangerous as hell. If you guys remember some of the fighters, he absolutely shredded on the feet. I mean, the one name that comes to mind is Quentin Rampage Jackson. Comes to mind. John shredded him on the feet and choked him out with a rear naked choke. And Jones was able to, was able to shred him because Quentin Rampage was just moving forward in a straight line the whole entire time. Whole time. No zigzag movement, no change in directions. None of that. So. Same thing with DC. Same thing with DC. In that second fight, DC was literally right in front of John Jones. And although DC had his moments in that fight, his moments were big. Like, you know, like he landed a, uh, he landed a few uppercuts in there, got an overhand in there. Like he landed big shots. But overall, John was tagging him up. He was tagging DC up. If you think I'm joking, go back and rewatch that fight. And of course, John was able to knock him out. This dude's about to die, bro. Like, this fight is just so straightforward at this point. That's because DC was always, you know, John knew exactly where to find him. He's just like, oh, you're, oh, there you are. You're in front of me. Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. You're right here. You're exactly where I thought you would be. That allows John to plan his attacks. His attacks are very straight, very li very linear. He likes the teeps, he likes his side kicks, he likes his elbows, he likes his knees. Set him down. See, every time this man walks in, I know he's about to throw. And so we're just gonna line up elbows. Line up bows for him. Okay. This round is done. We're doing pretty good. It's only a matter of time before this fight is over. I do not think he's going to be able to survive much longer. Let him come in. Uh, let him come in. Oh, how dare you take down John Jones? Who told you you could do that? Who gave you permission to do that? Boy, come here. Come on, walk in like you always do so I can elbow you in the face. Come on. You know you want to. You know you want to. Aha! Doom, doom, do doom, do 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 Rest in peace, sir. Rest in peace. All right, folks. That does it. Oh, yeah. Great fight, homie. Good fight. That is it. That is it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do not forget to leave a like. It absolutely helps out the channel. For those of you that want to uh, support me further, like a lot of you have lately, which I really, really appreciate. Thank you so much. Just check out the link in the description below. It says merch. You can purchase uh, t-shirts with my art on it. Those are my babies, man. 
proud of those really really proud of those i think you guys are going to enjoy them we've got um this last style bender the bmf uh, the nigerian nightmare and pound for pound up there you're definitely going to find something that you like i promise you so check it out but that's it thanks for watching leave a like and later today i'm going to drop episode four of playing every single ufc game ever made so keep an eye out for that and i will see you guys later with a brand new one as always stay safe Peace out.